Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Barrett, and I'm a software engineering manager at Facebook. I support the team at Facebook Connectivity that contributes to the Magma project in the Magma Core Foundation. So we've just heard an excellent overview from Amar, who talked about Magma, why it's different, how it's architected, what it's used for, and how it's designed to dramatically reduce the total cost of ownership of networks. We at Facebook Connectivity see this important to bringing more people online and also to enabling the open source telco movement and catalyzing open source 5G. Magma is a hyperscalable and distributed core. One of the things that's different about Magma is it's designed to run at the far edge, on far edge appliances to support local breakout to IP all the way at the cell site. It's open source and license free. It's cloud native, containerized, and features control plane, user plane separation. It's modern vendor and transport agnostic and supports integration with existing mobile network operator cores using the optional federation gateway shown on the diagram as Amar explained. And it supports all access convergence. So it's designed for LTE, for Wi-Fi, for private LTE use cases with CBRS spectrum, and also 5G use cases. But I'd like to talk a bit first about Magma's history, how it started, where it's gone, and how it's really accelerating lately as it's really found accelerated growth in the community. So if you look two years ago when Magma first showed up on GitHub, it was being built by a small group of software engineers at Facebook. Around 20 or 30 people built Magma, the team grew, until in July of 2020, Magma was announced as an open source project with the release 1.0, backed and supported by the Open Infrastructure Foundation, the Telecom Infra Project as one of possibly several open core networks and the Open Air Interface Software Alliance. And since July, 2020, the community has grown rapidly. So across these three sets here of advocates, contributors, and participants, these are the sets of people that participate in writing code for Magma as advocates, people that participate in code reviews and technical discussions as contributors, and people who engage in the community on Slack and Q&A and participate in GitHub discussions. And it's really grown dramatically. And in February, 2021, we announced our next move for the community, which is to become a neutral foundation called the Magma Core Foundation, hosted under the Linux Foundation with neutral governance. And that occurred in February, 2021, which we announced at our Magma Developers Conference. And we've noticed even more rapid growth since then. So as of April, 2021, we had over 400 people actively engaging and contributing in the design and engineering of Magma. The community is actually even larger than that. If you look at the last tier in the orbit model of people who are observers of the project that are starring our repo or, or uh, pulling um, a, a branch on, uh, on, on GitHub, it's actually even larger. So we, have, we clock in over 1,500 members of the community at this point that are either members of our Slack community or are starring our repo and are um, uh, pulling a, a branch on Git. So when the Magma Core Foundation was founded in 2021, we're really trying to position Magma as the de facto open source network core. And we think we're there with the launch of the Magma Core Foundation. So you'll find familiar governance from the Linux Foundation with a technical steering committee and a governing board. The technical steering committee is comprised of, uh, uh, is elected group of contributors and the governing board is comprised of, of members that join to help steer the project's um, uh, strategy. So we retain our, our affiliation with the telecom infra project as one of possibly several open core networks. Facebook community still provides a backstop of software engineering contribution to the community. We also provide a backstop of technical support to systems integrators and value-added resellers that want to deploy Magma, who can be assured of that they can receive level four support from the Facebook software engineering team for any operational issues that could emerge. We have ecosystem partners at the Open Infrastructure Foundation and the Open Air Interface Software Alliance, and a number of both large existing well-known companies and new startups that are participating in the Magma Core Foundation. So it's our belief that Magma will be the one open core implementation that's open source, that's converged, and that supports multiple types of access technologies and is access agnostic, that's cloud native across both the central cloud and the edge cloud, and is multi-tenant, allowing a single instance to manage potentially multiple networks at a time. 
So here's how we're building the ecosystem. If you look across, we have uh, industry groups that we partner with to help scale our developer community and help drive adoption amongst developers and operators. Developers and operators help to find current use cases, but also motivate future use cases. And we partner with research projects as Magma with the academic community to help investigate some of those super future use cases. So examples are there are features that are showing up in 5G releases 16 and 17, like integrated access and backhaul networks, uh, like non-terrestrial connectivity in 5G release 17. Uh, also work in ONF and Open Air Interface Software Alliance and ORAN Alliance on uh, software defined radio access network and radio intelligence controller work. Because we've seen people building on top of Magma to integrate through with non real time radio intelligence controllers. The academic community really helps spur innovation that we see uh, flowing into startups that want to use Magma to build uh, novel solutions that they build on top of. And then startups help drive adoption in industry groups. So startups often uh, will partner and use Magma technology uh, to build end to end solutions. Uh, new innovative solutions and take things to market as value added resellers of the stack. We really like to invite anyone listening to consider joining and building your connectivity software as a surface or, or enterprise solution or end consumer solution on top of Magma to build your business faster and ride the 5G wave with us. So here's what's in it for you. If you're if you're looking uh, at yourself as a as a possible uh, uh, distro vendor of Magma. You're gonna build your own distro around it and take it to market. So your development teams can focus on development and integration as a key part of your strategy. You can use Magma's production grade commercial ready building blocks to build your end-to-end -end solutions and lean on the Magma community to help, you know, kind of jumpstart your project. If you're a startup or an investor, we think the Magma stack's pretty compelling because it lets you build your solution faster and accelerate your product development, your total time to market. You have an expert community you can lean on and you can explore adjacent opportunities in emerging use cases around the core problem you're trying to solve. So it really it's just going to help you accelerate as a project. So you can hear, see here some of the quotes from, uh, from Boris, the founder and CEO of FreedomFi, and also Patrick, the founder and CEO of Connect5G, who know how Magma helped them and their project uh, go to market faster, deploy faster, and, and really act as, a, as an engine powering wireless innovation. So I noted Magma is partnering with academic and public domain projects. So if you think about some bleeding edge research projects that uh, you know, are trying to do experimentation on some of the latest um, things in, in 3GPP or other projects, it's not very practical to start from scratch uh, recreating parts of a 4G or 5G stack only to add your new use case or, or, or differentiation or research project on top of it. Uh, and it's difficult to do that with any existing commercial solutions uh, because you don't have access to the source code. So what we're witnessing is that a lot of the bleeding edge features are showing up first in open source. So an example there is uh, uh, non-terrestrial connectivity with the Satisfy project or the ESA Alex project by the European Space Agency to adapt cellular protocols and waveforms to be used for non-terrestrial high altitude platforms and satellite connectivity projects. We already see contributions from those projects with significant amounts of public sector funding showing up in open air interface and open core projects. Another example is public sector opportunities with DARPA uh, and the US Department of Defense. There's a lot of interest in that community on shifting security left and having more secure open source solutions deployed because you have actually access to all of the lines of code. And when there is a security vulnerability, you can very quickly patch it uh, rapidly and spin a new build. And so that, that, that helps mitigate supply chain threats that uh, can be of concern using vendor equipment. And so there's projects going on with DARPA and the open programmable and secure 5G opportunity where they're looking at the, ad, ad, the advantageous nature of Magma and other open RAN projects for their ability to support that shift left security model and quickly have a more secure uh, solution that has a quicker turnaround time on vulnerabilities. So we support several universities as well uh, shown here uh, who are uh, using Magma and are contributing back to the community. So just to highlight a couple of really interesting building blocks uh, and solutions that we see happening in the community that, that were featured in our Magma Developers Conference that I thought were particularly exciting. So we featured in, in February of, of this year, 
that we now have support for Amazon's far edge appliances to deploy the Magma Access Gateway component. So now if you're deploying Magma on AWS, uh, you can take advantage of work that we've done together with, with Amazon uh, to let you in a single click provision your Magma orchestrator in the cloud, but then deploy your Magma Access Gateway component uh, with no upfront cost on one of Amazon's far edge appliances that have electronic ink shipping labels right on them. You just tell Amazon where you want them shipped. And one of these uh, boxes ships out pre-provisioned with the AMI for the Magma Access Gateway and set up for zero touch provisioning where it'll connect back to your, to your AWS um, hosted uh, orchestrator uh, in an AWS region uh, or on-prem on an outpost uh, and set up your network for you and you're ready to go. You just connect your 5G, 4G or 5G radio to it. Uh, which I think is pretty exciting. So these are ruggedized boxes that are low cost. You pay Amazon uh, uh, you know, a monthly uh, subscription fee to use them and Amazon replaces them if they ever go bad. Another really exciting uh, solution that we've seen built on top of Magma uh, is from the Helium project. So Helium is a, is a cryptocurrency uh, that you know, instead of um, you know, burning electricity to mine their coins, you actually mine coins by connecting the unconnected. And until now, the Helium network's mostly been a, a, a LoRaWAN network for IoT, where you deploy um, Helium hotspots to extend uh, a community LoRaWAN network that anyone can use for their IoT applications. But uh, Freedom Fi, together with Helium, just announced at our developers conference, a new solution where using CBRS spectrum, you can deploy 4G and 5G hotspots uh, to connect the unconnected in a people's network using citizen broadband spectrum that's unlicensed and free for anyone to use uh, for 4G and 5G and use that to mine coins, which is really exciting use case uh, that I think is really going to, um, we're going to see a lot of fast growth and adoption from. So thanks for listening. I think uh, now it's best to turn this over to Arpit, who is going to take you through some end-to-end -end solutions uh, built on Magma. Uh, and their use cases. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that was a great overview and a great set of use cases that kind of cover the uh, Magma e ecosystem from a big picture perspective. Uh, I'm excited to be here on the Magma Day. And uh, what I'm going to do is basically give you a quick overview on how Magma fits into the end-to-end -end solutions across multiple open source projects. Um, and, and how end-to-end uh, -end use cases are being developed by the community at the Linux Foundation. Uh, joining me is uh, Tina Su from um, ARM, who is the uh, TSC chair for Acreno, a critical project under LFH. So before I get into the details of the roadmap, as well as the end-to-end -end, uh, solutions, and, and Tina will walk through the uh, uh, one specific example of how Acreno and Magma are integrated into what's called a blueprint. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture of how um, vertical market adoption is happening of an end-to-end -end open source software. So you can see that there are uh, lots of open source projects. Uh, some of these are uh, you know, very critical, very important. Uh, it's not a comprehensive list by any means. Uh, but as these projects come together, whether through APIs, through integrations, through onboarding, lifecycle management, through use cases, through demos, you know, many different ways. Um, one of the fundamental things that we have been doing here at the Linux Foundation is trying to get them uh, to evolve these markets. So in the middle, uh, you kind of see a big segmentation, you know, there's the enterprise networking users, and then there's the service providers. Service providers obviously include uh, cloud service providers, uh, telecom carriers, etc. Uh, and then in the enterprise, you have the different verticals that each have a different need from an IoT and an edge perspective that will use uh, Magma as well as other projects slightly differently. Uh, so if you look at the specific use cases on uh, that are very important in 2021 um, and maybe a couple of years since then, uh, specifically for enterprise networking, you can see we have uh, private LTE, uh, how workloads run across clouds, how do you get network visibility uh, for an enterprise in these multi-cloud deployments. Uh, but then when it comes to service providers, 
the telecom and cloud service providers are collaborating significantly under the Linux Foundation networking, under the Linux Foundation Edge, under CNCF, to bring you know, an end-to-end 5G-based deployment, to train people on 5G, to develop global connectivity. Huge initiatives going on. And, and, and then as you get into some of the very important users that are uh, taking advantage of this open source stack, you know, government across the globe is at the forefront of uh, building on these uh, end-to-end open source projects. Uh, one specific project I want to, pro- uh, or initiative I want to point out is, is the 5G blueprints or su- uh, super blueprints as we call it uh, under the Linux Foundation networking. So this is what's happening. And when you take a project centric view, uh, you can see that from an end-to-end perspective, uh, you know, I've presented this at multiple conferences, but it keeps getting better and better and, and as more innovation comes in. Uh, from the left, the various means of uh, access, uh, mobile networks, residential, small, medium, or enterprise, whether they, they have their own data centers or not. Uh, you come in through ORAM, um, a project under the LF Edge called Home Edge, Fledge, Eve, all these projects, I'll tell you the use cases on that. Uh, brought into an edge uh, integration project called Acreno, uh, and then move into the core part of the uh, stack uh, through a public cloud or or through a telecom uh, service provider, uh, moving into the data plane acceleration and the infrastructure part, whether it's FDIO, Kubernetes, DPDK, et cetera, uh, moving up into uh, sort of the VIMS, which is open stack, control plane, uh, network automation project called ONAP, all the way up into the core uh, or network application functions, right? Now, these could be VNFs, CNFs, uh, and one of the first ones that now um, uh, we're showing you and talking about today is Magma, which is which is one of the first open, um, open mobile packet core, which is kind of a, uh, an application sitting on the telco side that can be pulled into the end-to-end stack. So very important, uh, uh, you, very important set of projects that can be brought together. And then when you can do open compliance and interoperability in um, in an open environment under a neutral governance, that project, you know, like an Anuket is getting extreme traction. This will just speed up the deployment. So let's talk through how these projects come together from an open source perspective. Uh, as we all know, uh, projects are hosted under a neutral governance with a developer community, TSC, code gets produced, uh, documentation gets produced, a set of uh, use cases, whatever, right? I mean, it's, it's a set of technology that gets produced, uh, created across the world, uh, brought together by either products and integration integrators. So these could be vendors, system integrators, bringing it all and then put into production where people can make money and then invest back in the uh, community. So that's kind of the the circle of uh, project life, if you may. And one of the things that we have seen in the last three years is the need for accelerating what is the lower part of the cycle, products to production. And for that, a couple of things need to happen. The interop, the compliance, the verification, the testing, the certification, et cetera, et cetera, needs to happen in the open open world. It's not open source software, but it is open source governance. And two initiatives that I want to point out, one is LF Networking's Anuket. Anuket is a project that kind of combine two existing projects, uh, OPNFP and CNTT. I mean, I'm throwing a lot of acronyms here, but essentially they, uh, they are responsible for uh, defining architectures, reference architectures, whether it's OpenStack based or Kubernetes based into a reference implementation that um, a solution can uh, get tested against, whether it's an FBI, MANO or VNFs and get certification and batching for that. So very, very interesting activities there. And then LF Edge is a set of blueprints that bring hardware and software as an implementation of a particular use case uh, to the community so that it can be reproduced and deployed very quickly. And we'll talk about some of these in in a little bit more detail. So if I look at the specific use cases that uh, that have come around, uh, let's talk about uh, the projects that 
are highlighted here. So the first one is ORAN. Uh, as you know, it's, um, uh, it's one of the largest communities and the largest alliances to disaggregate uh, and open up the RAN, which is one of the last pieces of the puzzle in the Telco network. Uh, Linux Foundation hosts the software community for ORAN, which, uh, which is called ORAN SC. Uh, and the use cases that are being produced, created, discussed there are RG, end-to-end -end slicing, quality of experience, optimization, how do different white boxes come in, et cetera. Then you move on to you know, Kubernetes, OpenStack, you know, sort of the uh, cloud layer or, or, or the virtualization layer, if you may, infrastructure layer. And then you get into uh, Anuket, which I talked about open compliance, verification, standardization, onboarding, reference implementation. Uh, ONAP, I, I won't talk about the control plane projects. You know, they have been proven and deployed in, in, in for quite some time now. Uh, but then when you get into ONAP, you get into 5G uh, network slicing, cross cloud VPN, zero touch, closed loop, control loop, you know, lots of these real use cases that are needed for network automation. And then on top, obviously the magma, which is, you know, a critical piece of uh, the open source core wireless network. So, you know, these use cases are being done in each of these projects. And, you know, our, our goal is to bring it all together. You move up into the, uh, or move out into the edge of the network. Um, you know, you have a set of projects that are now trying to unify the edge across the cloud deployments, across IoT, across the enterprise and across telco. So think of, you know, these four markets trying to solve the same problem of plumbing, lifecycle management, onboarding, et cetera, for the edge computing world, right? And I'll talk about the definition in just a bit, but some of the examples include uh, you know, virtualization on on-prem devices, anomaly detection, right? Uh, you have projects like Fledge that are doing uh, extremely constrained, sensitive IIoT type predictive maintenance uh, and, and base monitoring, right? Turbines, transformers, pumps, et cetera. Uh, or you have EdgeX Foundry, which is one of the large projects under LF Edge that would do IoT frameworks. Again, all in the open source for building automation, industrial process control, smart cities. And then, of course, you have uh, on the edge a crano uh, where you're going to build blueprints for testing out these various use cases and deploying it very, very quickly. Uh, so you can see that all these use cases from, from, from core to edge to access, from telecom to enterprise, they're all solving, um, you know, use cases and similar issues that are important to an end user. So let's uh, uh, take a moment and define the edge. And this is important because, you know, you will see very quickly that, you know, when Tina comes and talks about an ICN blueprint under a crano, it kind of uses terminology that fits together uh, beyond what magma, you know, defines uh, in the core. So this diagram is one of the most most screenshotted diagram in this kind of new world of the pandemic, right? I wouldn't say the most widely used, but the most screenshotted diagram uh, that we have seen on all these uh, virtual presentations. And what it is, is um, under an umbrella called LF Edge, we have taken, the community has taken the liberty to define the definitions in terms of an edge. And this is what the diagram shows. So if you look at the bottom, uh, there's really two types of edges. Uh, and before I get into that, you know, think of the terms that you have used in edge, you know, thin edge, thick edge, far edge, near edge, you know, all these are relative terms and they don't mean in the same thing to everybody. So what the community did was they standardized on definition. So we would really appreciate and, you know, as Magma community, as well as, you know, CNCF community starts looking at edge computing to use and utilize these terms because that's what the edge community has done. So there's two types of edges. There's a user edge and then there's a service provider edge. User edge is dedicated and operated by the user. Service provider edge is shared and as a service. Now the last mile separates these typically, but not it's not a hard cut. Uh, if you go in the user edge, it's not one implementation. And that's part of the challenge we have in the community. But we have been able to standardize across three specific implementation. There is on the extreme left, um, an edge that really has extreme constraints, right? Physical constraints, uh, resourcing constraints, memory, compute, et cetera. 
hardening constraints. And that's called constraint device edge. Um, these could be microcontroller based, this could be embedded compute, et cetera. Then you get into some uh, more semi-secure locations where uh, you, know, you may have an IoT gateway sitting around still in the control of an enterprise user uh, or an IoT user. And uh, there you may have something called a smart device edge. And then um, if you are a large enterprise or if you have enough of these um, uh, factories, buildings, homes, et cetera, where you have servers in a semi-secure location, uh, then you have something called on-prem data center edge. Uh, these are all again um, in the control of a user, as I said. And then if you move on across the last mile, uh, you get into a couple of edges that are very important here. One is the access network, which is really the RAN. So if you're putting edge compute below the RAN, and if you're putting it in a smart central office, uh, about say one to six servers, you can get uh, the about 20 milliseconds of latency across the application. And that's very critical because 5G really narrows down on the transmission latency as we all know. So once you have that, you can now have edge computing all the way to the smart central office. Anything after that, the latency may be tricky. So I always say, you know, an IoT application uh, that dumps sensor data once a week is not an edge application. It may be an IoT application, but it's not an edge application. So with that said, the projects shown here, uh, and I won't go into that because some of them are relevant to Magma's community, some of them are not, some of them are relevant to the CNCF community. But the more important thing here is um, there is a different types of constraint edges, uh, everything from infrastructure to application. Um, EdgeX Foundry and Acreno being the, the two largest projects, uh, most mature if you may, stage three. And we have seen several other projects moving up the pipeline as well. Uh, if you wanna download the whole LF Edge report, uh, we just published it under LF Edge State of the Edge. Um, and it's huge, the market's huge. And we wanna take advantage of that whole edge computing, uh, you know, using, um, using CNCF projects, using LFN, LF Edge, and more importantly, you know, integrating with Magma. So uh, really uh, wanted to take this couple of minutes to get into uh, explanation of um, the, the edge terminology. So with that said, how do we pull this all together? We pull this all together in an end-to-end -end solution in a project called, uh, uh, or I, should, I would say an initiative called end-to-end -end 5G Super Bloop. Um, it's hosted by the Linux Foundation Networking. So you can go to www.linuxfoundationnetworking.org slash 5G Super Blueprint. It is a task force. It's a, pro it's a, it's a, it's a project that is extending um, an existing governance under the, under the LFN demo that we uh, did, but it's more than the demo. It's now bringing components together from an end-to-end -end perspective that crosses LF networking, LF edge, Magma, CNCF, ORAN, and a lot more. Okay, these are just some examples. Um, and what we're doing is we are building this blueprint in real time. So we really encourage everybody to participate in this, join mem uh, you know, as members if you want to influence this even more under LF networking, but it is an open, uh, open initiative to everybody. So let me walk you through uh, how Magma is getting integrated into these components. So here's the overall roadmap uh, that the community has created. Uh, lots of details are being worked in real time because these projects themselves have a roadmap. So bringing all these projects back together is obviously gonna be a, a challenge. Um, and, and the reason we wanna show it in an open community is so that it can be done under a neutral governance. And then you know, we'll have vendors, system integrators, end users doing distros, doing you know, multiple things with it. Linux Foundation is not in the business of that. But what we wanna do is show a blueprint that can easily pull projects together uh, upstream and downstream and solve specific use cases. So here's how these things use. look. Uh, the, the team's working on this quarter, it's working on getting you know, the 5G core and some version of Mac integrated with a whole set of uh, components that can bring an open source core stack and edge stack together. 
okay? Uh, obviously, 5G fixed wireless access, private 5G, multi-access edge computing, IoT, et cetera, are primarily the use cases. As we move forward, uh, we get into the end-to-end uh, -end slicing, uh, which brings um, not just uh, the core, but it also brings a set of commercial RANs and from an open source perspective, end-to-end -end slicing uh, in play. And then finally, uh, through the uh, Q4 timeframe, uh, this brings uh, not just the end-to-end uh, -end network uh, for RAN, but it also opens up the RAN with ORAM SC software, and it's a fully disaggregated open source-based 5G stack. So uh, with, with obviously all the use cases that are required by the end user. So let me walk you through the three steps. Uh, the first phase is uh, the following. Uh, we're going to use emulators for the RAM. Uh, easy to do. I mean, easy to say, hard to do, but um, those are sitting right there on the left. Uh, you come in and you bring in, you know, own app onboarding through uh, a project called uh, OpenNest plus Anuket and Kubernetes, bring it all in um, into Magma, Magma Orchestrator using the access gateway. Uh, through the, obviously the N6 and obviously all the N interfaces. Um, what is shown here on the Acrano side is ICN and I'll have Tina talk about this in a lot more detail on how to do it. So I won't go into this, uh, but that's kind of the application control and application layer. And then on the bottom, you see the NFVI uh, in the telco terms, right? Network function virtualization infrastructure layer, which uses a whole bunch of uh, what is called uh, open source projects from data plane acceleration to control plane to, um, to storage, et cetera. So that's kind of the phase one. Uh, phase two is relatively straightforward, um, uh, but what you're doing is kind of adding two main things here. One is you're adding the support for commercial RAMs. And then the other thing you're doing is adding end-to-end -end network slicing, which kind of comes from uh, the Magma roadmap, um, uh, ONAP already has support for the network slicing. Uh, Magma is working on it, and I think it comes together very nicely. And then finally, in phase three, you include the ORAN community. So today, the OVAN A1 interfaces from ORAN to ONAP are already uh, tested and, and, and released. There are other interfaces that uh, need to be worked out, both for non-real-time RIC as well as real-time RIC, but more importantly, uh, bringing it in such a way that it is a seamless end-to-end -end use case across these projects. So very ambitious, do participate. Uh, it's part of LF Networking's um, uh, initiative, and there's a large community uh, that is working on it. Uh, you know, if, if you need to uh, look at anything particular or cannot find anything, you know, obviously reach out to me. But that's kind of the ambition we have on, um, on doing this end-to-end -end blueprints. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tina to um, you know, walk you through some of the specifics of one example of a Crano uh, and Magma coming together under, an, under a blueprint called ICN. And, and she's going to walk you through uh, the rest of the blueprints as well, because they are, um, you know, all, not all of them are relevant to Magma, but it gives you a good perspective of how a Crano is setting up uh, various use cases, from, you know, connected cars to gaming to um, you know, augmented reality classrooms, you know, all the cool use cases that Edge is known for. Uh, so she's going to walk you through that. And uh, again, if there's any questions, we'll come back uh, and, and kind of do this. So again, I'll, I'm going to pass it over to Tina and, uh, uh, you know, she'll, she'll do a deep dive on this. Thank you. Thank you, Apit. This is how uh, Equino R4 Blueprint available now. Uh, we announced it in, in uh, February 24th. So from here, you can see, um, see the R4 Blueprints, which are, which are new, uh, is indi are indicated in blue. So you can see the industry IoT predictive maintenance blueprint sits on the uh, smart device edge and uh, it has been integrated um, Eve, and, um, Eve and Fletch. So it supports for the industry IoT case. Uh, like uh, when the temperature is up, it will give an indication and alarm uh, to the backend like a GCP. 
And the other new one, the AI Edge uh, auto Autonomous Vehicle, the IVIX, which is support uh, integrate the uh, auto dot where, um, um, auto where the auto, sorry, auto where the auto, and the federated learning, uh, which has been deployed in the uh, financial technologies, has been widely deployed by WeBank. Um, the other one, the ICM private 5G LTE, I'm going to talk about this a lot in the uh, later slides. The Kubi Edge support AI and the uh, ETC in the highway, the electronic the collected uh, um, control. Uh, it has been uh, deployed in the cloud and in the edge. The public cloud edge interface here, uh, sitting above the uh, public cloud core part and public cloud edge part. Uh, which has provided APIs orchestrations for the telcos and uh, hyperscalers to work together via PCS uh, layer. And the other one we have the KNI Industry Edge, uh, which is a new, which is new uh, to support uh, operator in France about their deployment for the industry IoT and also the manufacturing. Okay, and the green one are the existing R uh, R one R two R R3 enhanced, enhanced the blueprints. Uh, we are still developing and uh, making them more mature and adding more use cases and uh, hardening the code. Okay, this is private LTE 5G ICN. The purpose is to create an EPC 5G in a box to enable enterprises and operates to deploy LTE 5G uh, we use it, we use OSS like Free 5 gc and Magma. So Magma has been used here and also uh, Free 5 gc You can see the infrastructure orchestration include Ironic, Mitre 3 and Cluster API Sync 2 d So this is quite wide. And also the ONAP has been used as uh, orchestration layer. We cover the network segments all the way from UCPE using Kubernetes on the network edge number one and cross the network core, which runs the Kubernetes as the E1 VEPC 5GC there. Uh, and same as the edge number one. And the other side of the network is the network edge number two. In this case, we can support a many uh, industry, the manufacturing, retail, farming, and mining. So I would like to talk about this uh, private LTE 5G ICM blueprint. This is our MVP plan. You can see from here. Um, the ONAP, openness is the orchestration layer and Kubernetes is the orchestration for the containers. Um, we have the Kubernetes plus open, uh, openness with the CUD uh, infer orchestration. And the magma sits on top of it. For example, we open the CNF number one to have a look. So we have the magma orchestration orchestrator on the top and sitting on top of the uh, AGW for 5G. The SMF and AMF and UPF is at the uh, control level layer and uh, um, a data plan layer. So it connects with the other CN2, uh, CNF number two with the uh, M1 interface to the 5G UE emulator and through the N2 interface to G node B emulator. So the N3 is between the GMB, G, G node B and emulator to the UPF directly. And the UPF interconnect with the data network. So this is runs the VNF number one and Magma sits for the uh, CNF number number one. So the workflow is like this. Number one, we first install the, uh, the, the KubiF, KubiF uh, number one and two, and then uh, we installed ONAP and ENCO as the orchestrator. Uh, after that, we register the Kubi, uh, KubiRef number two, KubiRef two with the ONAP and ENCO. And we onboard the CNF one and two, you can see from here. Uh, and also VNF number one. In this case, we can create a network service with uh, CNF or VNFs, and we can deploy the network services, like what you can uh, think about for the 5G private LTE, like for the manu uh, manufacturing, et cetera. And then uh, we register the AWG with the Magma orchestrator. This is important to uh, interact with Magma. 
And finally, manually configure the AWG and run the UE Genode B test. This is the uh, minimum the, uh, workflow, the minimum uh, data flow for uh, our private LTE 5G integrated uh, magma. Okay, here uh, we can see the uh, magma integration plan details. Um, the MAGMA AWG 5G early implementation available as a VM, like here is a VNF. Also the MAGMA orchestrator early implementation available as a container, we call it CNF of course. And the private LTE 5G ICM team, which is uh, our blueprint team, uh, part of ICM blueprint family, will orchestrate this too using ONAP. The UEN and Genode B emulator will also be orchestrated as a CNF. Let's see the previous page uh, as a CNF number two, if available uh, in a containerized form. So this is our uh, detailed plan. So LFH and uh, Equino community are very excited to have Magma to join the LF and collaborate on innovative blueprints to provide this end-to-end -end solutions. Thank you again for the opportunity to discuss this here at the Magma Day. Thank you, have a good one.